Standing up in McKinney. This is According to Callus. This is going to be October the 24th, episode 289 of the numbered episodes. And we're just going to go with Monday, Monday. So we're going to kind of talk about some things that are coming up. Talk about a couple of different ideas for action plans. And, you know, how to move the ball forward, if you will. And I am going to do my best to talk about things other than the election that is going to be taking place in a little over two weeks. You know, I, you know what, I, I'll, I'll amend that. I will focus on the election only on Tuesdays. So the, the next three Tuesdays will be election stuff. And I will uh, try and be succinct and give you some additional information that you may or may not have, but might help you uh, stay motivated to get out and uh, get the right people across the finish line. And before we go on to the brunt of the show, let me just remind you that if you like, share, comment, and subscribe, it helps a lot. We hit 35K downloads over the weekend and quite frankly i'm a little surprised that i had as many downloads over the uh, weekend as i did and this is a good sign i mean this is evidence that word is getting out that alternative uh, presentation of what's going on in uh, mckinney and collin county is getting there and uh, i'm just gonna touch base briefly on a few things that i ran across over the last week and how that relates to some of the other uh festering issues if you will so coming up on uh wednesday thursday and friday i am going to break down um three parts of a multi uh tiered uh, counter offensive if you will on the establishment and by the establishment, i mean the entirety of the establishment and and i broke it down into three steps because I believe the issues are simple, not easy, but simple, and it's just an example of what we, we the people, can do that can make a difference. So we will talk about that at length on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right, so the action plans, right? The action plans are are part and parcel of that, and the idea is that I don't command an army. Don't want to command an army. I, I have a little bit of uh, influence with some people. Uh, I've always said that my goal is to influence the influencers. And I really think that we stand on the precipice of rolling back some of the tyranny, some of the overreach, some of the abuses of power. But what it's going to require of us is follow through. It's going to require of us to hold people accountable. It's going to require of us to stay active. Now, I know a whole lot of people have spent a lot of time working to get these officials elected or reelected in many cases. And, you know, there's a lot of built up goodwill there, if you will. There's uh, definitely a reliance on the grassroots people to show up and get stuff done. Donors only go so far. Uh, Campaign commercials only go so far. It is boots on the ground that generally makes the difference. And uh, to that end, those folks are going to want a well-deserved timeout, a break, a pause. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you have from November 10th to about Christmas. And then we have to put back our boots on and get back to work. The reason being is twofold. One, we're going to have the next session. And we're going to have to remind those guys and gals down there that we sent down there that they work for us. And we have certain expectations. And we're going to keep reminding them of what we want done. What we sent them there for. And that's going to mean that, hey, Brandon Burden is uh, arranging with his North Texas conservatives group to send busloads of people down over the course of the session. That'll probably uh, 
require some investment of time and money on some of our local activists. And it's good. It's a good thing. And I, I hope that I can t- partake in one of those little bus trips down to Austin. I think it'd be very useful and very enlightening. If you haven't been, I strongly suggest you take the day off of work, pay the uh, small fee that they're going to have to charge and ride the bus. You don't have to drive. You can take a nap. You can eat. You can, you know, shoot the breeze. You can strategize. You can do all that stuff while somebody else is driving. It's, you know, it's a couple hour trip and uh, you can make the most of it. And they will likely be there all day and leave at the very end. There's an advantage to having somebody else drive. And quite frankly, I've done it once or maybe twice in the last uh, few years, last, I don't know, two, three sessions. And it was enjoyable. It was fun. But it is it is a sacrifice. I mean, it, it's chewing up an entire day that you maybe have other stuff you need to be doing. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's family stuff. But here's here's the underlying question. What's the priority? Do you want to see the changes made in Austin that affect Texas long term going forward? Or do you want to watch a football game? Or do you want to go to work for an extra day? I mean, we've got the rest of our lives to go to work. We have vacation time. We have PTO. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a valuable uh, resource, but we should choose to invest that. This is an exercise in self-governance, and we have to be willing to do a little bit of our own self-input. It's one thing to you know, communicate via calls or texts or emails, and it's another thing to actually show up at their doorstep and let them know we're watching what you're doing. To that end, I'm fairly certain the folks over at Colin Strong will be arranging for some kind of teleconference during the course of the session. If you're interested, I would suggest you reach out to them. They generally keep it to the um, part, some of the party leaders in um, Cowan County and the leaders of some of the clubs. But if you've got something important and your club leader isn't involved, get them involved. I mean, obviously you can't have 600 people on a uh, teleconference call, but hey, if you belong to a club or you have a vested interest in something that's going on, Reach out to one of the club leaders, one of the uh, leaders of the party, or or just one of the individual representatives themselves, and the that issue can be brought up. That issue can be brought to the forefront and remind people that, hey, I know you guys are down in Austin, but this is important. Back home in Collin County, we want to hear what you think on this. We would like to see if you can take action on this. In further news... <laughs> uh, that same time period, we're going to be gearing up campaigns for all the local municipal races that are set to kick off in May. And it's like we never get a break. There's never a breather. And you're right, there isn't. I firmly believe the schedule is planned this way on purpose, is to keep people distracted and exhausted all at the same time. And I'm here to tell you, there's a few pivotal pivotal key races that are at play in every town around Collin County. Here in McKinney, we're going to have an open seat for District 2 in the city council race. Mr. Rogers has termed out. Now, Mr. Rogers might want to return to the neighborhood and run for mayor. I myself am not excited about that notion, but it's a possibility. We also have uh, District 4 that's going to be up for re-election. Um... I'm not a huge fan of Mr. Franklin. Met him a couple of times. I don't dislike the guy, but he doesn't really seem to be all that interesting or go public with anything. And I kind of wish that our city reps would be, I don't know, a little more open, a little more aggressive on standing on specific issues. I cannot believe that the entirety of our city council is in lockstep on everything that gets done. It could be something similar to what goes down in Austin, whereupon you get elected, you go down in Austin and you're, you know, separated from the rest of your uh, constituents and you're held basically at bay and told you must do this to keep the party leaders happy. Uh, My suspicion is, is you must do this to keep the city fathers happy or you must do this to keep the mayor happy. But 
You know, if you're elected official and you represent a group of people, they may have slightly different opinions, and I'm sure that they would appreciate a little more action. Now, in fairness, I have not been to very many city council uh, meetings, mostly because they conflict with other things that I'm doing. But I talk to people that go to them, and I do on occasion watch the recorded proceedings. And uh, I just not all that enthusiastic about what's going on in our behalf. If that's something that you think you could have some influence or you would like to be heard or you are semi-retired and want to run, hey, check it out. I think that Precinct 4, you have, a, I guess, an even chance to win that race. And then 2, that's an open race. Now, even if there's an anointed successor... The only thing that person's got going from them is the, uh, probably the mayor, which is not a guy to be trifled with, and uh, the entire city father leadership, which apparently isn't entirely in lockstep any longer, which is good for us. You know, the city's been doing a lot of things over the years that benefit a number of people, but not the entirety of the city. And I realize that's how it always is. And uh, I know there was a certain controversy that came up, uh, I guess, a week ago when my friend was there watching. And he just kind of reported that they're very concerned that they they must maintain a minority majority district. Because apparently, uh, if you don't look like me or you don't sound like me, uh, people that look like me and sound like me are not capable of properly, properly representing you and your opinions. Because apparently, all people that have certain color skin, think and believe the same things. And apparently all people that mm, have English as a primary language also think a certain way or believe a certain thing. And apparently the same is true for anybody with that's a, I don't know, primarily Spanish speaker or, or uh, Arabic or whatever. I, I got to say this whole group identity thing, there's something to be said for it because there is truth to it, but if that's all we got, man, we're no better off than Congress. They they talk about the city is supposed to come together and get things done. They talk about how it's nonpartisan and we should all be on the same team. Well, yeah, okay, that's fine. But even when you're all on the same team, sometimes you got to have a guy that says, well, what about this? Or what about that? Or somebody else that says, well, I agree with you in part, but can we consider this? Or perhaps we could tweak this. I The fact that we're looking down upon anybody that asks questions or isn't entirely with what the program is, and I've got those scare quotes up, it's not the problem. The idea that you're not allowed to have a discussion, the idea that you're not allowed to, you know, question anything, that's the problem. You know, if if we got nothing from the baby boomers, it ought to have been the question authority course they seem to have forgotten all about that now that they are the authority but that being said look it's really difficult to get involved in politics and not have a certain amount of this become personal and i try extremely hard not to take anything personally and i know there are people that have come after me personally and i'm sure i've said things that other people have taken personally But 99 plus percent of the time, my issue is with the issues or the principles or or the fact that they're not being addressed or the fact that while they're lambasting one group for being partisan, they themselves are demonstrating their partisanship. It's not good, but I don't want to have to go home and consider my neighbor my enemy i don't want to have to go to church and think about the person that's sitting in the pew down the or in a chair next to me that well i i can't i can't close my eyes or i can't turn my back on them because they're the enemy that's just not a pleasant way to go through life it's it's not ideal situation i'd like to say that at the end of the day the majority of the people in McKinney generally think alike on many, many things. And on the things that we differ about, 
there's at least an understanding that it's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a different opinion. And that that person is still worthy of an opinion and has a valid point of view. And I got to say, that's a struggle for me too. But we have to come and approach things like that. Unfortunately, it's also true that there are certain segments of leadership. I got those scare quotes in the air now, right? Leadership that sees the rest of us as being beneath them. They see the rest of us as nothing more than bugs in their way. And we're, we're uh, not worthy of their time and their effort. You know, I know, I know, you know, I, it's not polite to talk like that. It's, it's, it's disturbing and, you know, borders into the whole tinfoil hat thing, whatever. But you have to be open to different ideas. You have to be open to a discussion. And just because you've made your decision doesn't mean you get to shove it down everybody else's throat. I've heard for the better part of 30 years, well, that's all fine. You're a Christian or you're a conservative. You're this or you're that. You don't get to shove your beliefs or your thoughts down my throat or in my face. Okay, that's fine. And I've kind of been okay with that. But that's clearly not the case anymore because the other side has taught us for that same period of time that they just wanted to be left alone. They just wanted to be treated like equals. They just they just wanted us to tolerate whatever. But now it's been amped up to the you must accept, condone, and enthusiastically approve of our behavior, whatever it is. That's where we're at now. And I can't go there. So what does that mean? That means I'd like to believe that in my city, in my county, that the few outliers that I'm, I really want to, I want to be careful. I say this. a few of those outliers out there that have, let's say for lack of a better term, perverted ideology. And you could go where you want with that, but focus on the word perverted that I don't wish to see them stoned but I'm not okay with what they want to do. And when we cross the line to children, I take that rather mm, personally. That's a good word, personally. And when you advocate for being able to do things to minors, I take that rather personally too. You know, I have a friend that's, going all around the state and quite frankly, he's been rather aggressive on protecting children, defenseless ones, whether it's from drugs or pornography in the schools. And he's doing a good job of making people aware of this. And I must echo his sentiments. His sentiment is you don't do this to kids, but yet we tolerate it. And I'm not really sure why. Is it just because it's easy? Is it just because we're afraid that we might upset somebody? Is it just because we just don't care anymore? I, I don't know. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not okay with it. I'm not going to be okay with it. And the more you push on me, the more likely it is that you're not going to like the results. But I believe firmly in the idea of live and let live. I'm willing to... Stay clear of people that want to do those things. I'm willing to avoid conflict as much as possible. But when you give me no other option, that's when things will get interesting. So I caution those that would seek to continue to test the patience and the resolve of the patriots. Notice I didn't say conservatives because we all know what I think about that term. But people that are concerned about liberty, the people that are concerned about Texas, people that are concerned about family and community will only put up with so much. And I'm well aware that there are some in the hierarchy above us and there are some that are in power that 
are playing us like we're chess pieces and they they're just waiting for the pawns to rise up so that they can bulldoze us over and i'm never going to advocate that however there are things we can do there are different options we can explore as a matter of fact i will talk just a little bit about those on wednesday thursday and friday and honestly texas tuesday might touch on a couple of these things too now none of this is going to be brand new material none of this is going to be you know something from out of the blue but i'm building on a thesis if you will for lack of a better word a couple of ideas of which we can activate to push back against the actions of those that seek to oppress us without starting a war without starting a shooting match without resulting in violence. (sighs) Some of you might have seen the movie 300. And uh, whether you like the movie or not, whether you feel it was an accurate depiction of what happened in Thermopylae is irrelevant. One of the most interesting things that was said in the movie, uh, and I'll paraphrase it is, uh, The king says, yes, you've brought a thousand men, but they are farmers, they are craftsmen, they are this, they are that. I've bought 300 and my men are all warriors. So I would say to you, I've brought more to this fight than you have. And yes, I know that's a bad paraphrase because I've seen the movie a long time ago. The idea is... Is it better to have the warrior in the garden or the gardener in the battlefield? The idea is, is it better to have the craftsman on the battlefield or at home doing the craft stuff? You know, I also relate this back to the, uh, the movie, The Patriot. Once again, the idea that the warrior had retired and he tried to raise a family and separate himself from the things that he had done in his past, but the warrior's still in there. And he tried to stay peaceful. He tried to stay out of it. And they just kept pushing, pushing. And sooner or later, the man breaks and he reverts to his old me. And they didn't like the results. <laughs> What's funny is, I, I guess i somewhat ashamed to say that, <laughs> that I stumbled across some uh, old music that I don't care for the genre per se, but... Uh, the, the, the idea that Dr. Dre s- says a lyric that you'll turn me back to the old me, right? Think about that. There are a whole lot of men floating around in this country that have an old me. Maybe they were in the first desert storm. Maybe they went to Afghanistan early. Maybe they, they went to the second Gulf war. Maybe they're old enough that they went to Vietnam now, before you laugh and you poo-poo the fact that, you know, some guy that's 70 years old is going to be dangerous, well, I would suggest to you that that 70-year-old guy that trains up a bunch of people that are 30 to 50 years old is far more dangerous than some roided-up macho man that's 45 years old and that can, you know, handhold an M60 and knock down 30 people with that. I mean, I would much rather take my odds against a guy that's going to have to reload his own, his own M60 than some <sighs> crusty old 70 year old dude. That's trained up a whole army of people in let's just say nasty tactics. That's one of the reasons why I've started reading rules for radicals. I want to understand where they're coming from, what it is that they're doing. And when we better understand what it is they're doing, we can more effectively counter it. I encourage you If you don't want to buy the book, go get it at the library. But I encourage you to at least be aware of what's taught in there. And while it may not be entirely curtain, while it might not be 100% across the board, it is the bedrock of what a lot of these activist groups are doing right now. Now, he built on other stuff that came before him, and there's been stuff that's followed him. But if you can't even start at that baseline, you know, a couple hundred page book (laughs) that's written basically in modern English... You're never, ever going to get into the other stuff. You're never going to go into any of the deeper understanding of what's at play here. 
there's a much big battle or a much big bat a much bigger battle a war and perhaps going on in the background that we are just bit players in it and we should be grateful and careful that we don't get drawn further into it the whole battle of good and evil takes many forms and many shapes and we don't want to be caught in the crossfire but we do want to pivot out of the way we want to avoid the fight as much as possible as long as possible and quite frankly that's one of my goals is to encourage people to take peaceful means to make a difference encourage people to do the simple stuff it may not be easy but it's simple stuff to improve the situation to prolong the decay make it take longer before we're past that point in no return to to prevent what is inevitable Every empire collapses, and when it does, there's new opportunities. Yes, that's true, but it's extremely destructive, and I'd sure like to put off that destruction or mitigate it as much as possible. We can see this thing coming, and what can we do to counter it? And you may think, well, Callus, you've gone off in the left field here and uh, you know, lighten up on that tinfoil stuff. Okay, that's fine. And I'll take that fair criticism. But the idea is if you're not willing to look beyond what you see in front of you, if you're not willing to consider that there's other things at play here, I mean, there are a whole lot of people out there that have gone way deep into this rabbit hole. I'm just acknowledging there's a hole there. I don't wish to go down there and explore. I'm quite happy to stay right where I'm at and tell you, you want to avoid that hole. It's there. This is what that's all about. And if you can not fall down into it, we will all be in a better spot. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's wishful thinking. Understanding somebody's motivations for why they want to do what they do is useful to prevent it in the future. But when it's happening currently, it's more important to deflect it and to defend against it. And that's what I'm working on right now. And I don't claim to have all the answers. I don't claim to know everything there is to know about this. But I do know a few things. And I'm going to point you to other things and other people that can be more helpful along the way. I had a conversation this weekend. I talked to somebody about a situation that happened, I don't know, about a dozen years ago that I just vaguely knew about. But I got a name of somebody I can call now that I can probably get a whole lot more information to try and make sense of just what was going on there. And what you say, well, why does that matter now? Because just because something happened in the past doesn't mean that it's not relevant now. In fact, I would suggest that we ignore the past at our own peril. It'd be good to know where people come from. It'd be good to know where they're trying to take us. But that's going to require some time and effort. And you have to be willing to do the work. So I'm going to wrap this up now. It's uh, closing in on my 30 minutes. This was episode 289, the Monday, Monday. And I will see you on the other side.